This is The Son of Man by Belgian painter René Magritte. From a first glance, it simply depicts a formally dressed man wearing a bowler hat, which, like the apple covering his face, gives the character an ambiguous anonymity. But before we get to that, who was René Magritte? Magritte considered himself not so much a painter, but rather a philosopher who expressed his thoughts through paintings. While traditionally philosophers were confined to convey their concepts through language, Magritte took advantage of the psychological impact of visuals to communicate his ideas. And that was the exact philosophical question he was interested in posing. What actually anchors a visual representation of an object to the object itself? This can be seen in another one of Magritte's pieces, The Treachery of Images, depicting a lone pipe, captioned, Seen this pass une pipe. Je vous demande la permission de passer à l'anglais. Oh yeah, this is not a pipe. On first glance, it's quite self-explanatory. What's the meaning of this shit? This is not a pipe, but a representation of the form of a pipe. But if we engage in the caption's thesis, is that a representation is not synonymous with a pipe's essence, then this is not a pipe either, but merely a representation through language. Part of your knowledge of language is a way of decoding the noises that you hear and converting them into a system that matches your own representation. So returning to the Son of Man, the anchor of the painting is the apple, which obscures the man's face face and fills me with this strange anxiety. But why an apple? Well, the painting's title, yeah, the son of man. used as a recurring moniker in religious texts, offers some insight. In the story of Genesis, their temptation to eat of the fruit of knowledge came from a desire to have objective truth. If it's truth you're interested in, Dr. Tyree's philosophy class is right now. To understand reality like God would. The tempting serpent in Genesis 3 even says, eat it and your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. The true grail will bring you life. Knowing good and evil. This myth retells the foundations of mankind and by extension our fundamental characteristics in both Genesis and the Son of Man. The core element of human nature is the desire for knowledge, and the fruit is the obstacle to that knowledge. Notre appétit de comprendre, notre nostalgie d'absolu, ne sont explicables que dans la mesure où justement nous pouvons comprendre et expliquer beaucoup de choses. One last thing of significance is the man's headwear, which identifies who the man in the painting is. It's McGree himself, famous for wearing bowler hats. In fact, this painting was originally commissioned as a self-portrait. But the Son of Man isn't a self-portrait insofar as it represents McGree in his likeness, but a portrait of the artist as an anonymous man. I think when it comes to artists of any kind, there is a desperate intrigue to know them and the inner workings of their mind. When we see an artist's reputation of greatness, it provokes a sense of mystery, a want to understand the genius that hides behind Behind the mask. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. But what McGree demonstrates in painting himself is that any attempt for an artist to express their mind will always be a mystery. Je ne crois pas que le mystère soit quelque chose de connaissable, c'est l'inconnaissable. Because if a painting is just the artist's mind splattered onto a canvas, it will never really be the real genius, but merely a representation of the unknowable mind. Et il se peut que cet inconnaissable provoque chez nous de la joie également.